I'll ask the first question, and my question is really based off of if, if our listeners ever read your book, it's it's absolutely fabulous, and it talks a lot about the harmful effects of second wave feminism, mm-hmm. and and the different, um, uh, mainly the the gravest evil being abortion coming out of it, and right. so. I was wondering if you've ever done any research on your own um, that you didn't include in your book about first wave feminism and mm-hmm. what you think about that. Yeah. You know, I actually ha- I'm embarrassed to say I haven't done a lot of research on it. Um, it's something that I, I want to dig into more because um, my actually my bachelor's degree is in intellectual history. And I remember going back and looking at women like Mary Wollstonecraft and um, just seeing all of these these trends that that happen with women, and certainly what we see um, with first wave feminism, but I'm absolutely fa- taken with the idea of you know what happened during the Protestant Reformation and um, how much of feminism is really a reaction to that. Because if you look at Protestantism, you know they threw out Mary, they threw out religious orders for women, and they, they threw out female saints. Um, so really, what is left as far as helping an, your average woman? Um, or a theologically minded woman, how can she help be navigate? How, how can she help navigate all of these difficulties that certainly we find in scripture? Um, but you know, all of those sort of guardrails that we had, um, certainly Mary as a model and whatnot, um, if those are gone, then what's happening? And of course, you, you know, we know that that men were sort of put on this theological pedestal in a way that was different than a, than a priest because they didn't have the same kind of authority. Um, they were also married. And so that you can sort of almost see feminism really being set up um, where our, our the woman's faith is really navigated only through kind of a masculine model because the feminine was gone. So it sort of created this vacuum. Um, so that's really an area I'm, I'm anxious to dig into more because I think that there's so much that came out of that that led to either partial truths or um, just different ways that women didn't understand themselves. And, you know, I've, I've encountered this. Um, there's a great woman that writes. She went to um, a theological college that had Protestants and, and Catholics there. And she she describes, you know, this experience that she has with Protestant women that they they don't have any idea what she's talking about half the time because they don't have this experience of the saints or um, Mary to really understand themselves through that lens. Um, so I think that that piece has been really corrosive and that story hasn't been told properly yet. And that that's something that I would really like to get into because then I think the pieces of first wave feminism will make sense in light of that because you have these sort of partial truths or, you know, every denomination is also sort of um, interpreting scripture the way that they want to as well. So um, anyway, I think that that's an, an interesting piece that, um, like I said, I'd love to really dig into further. And I think that there's going to be a lot of um, rich, rich ideas that are going to help us see even more why that, you know, all of this has happened in the last century. I love that you mentioned that because I've dove into it a little bit myself. And mm-hmm. we've we've actually talked on our podcast some about how, you know, secular society says first, second, third wave, maybe fourth wave feminism. Right. But right. it can almost be traced back to that Protestant Reformation. Yeah. And especially yeah. with that lack of Mary, you know. Yes, absolutely. And I think and, and that's always what I come back to is just, you know, the fact that Mary is this whole movement is a reaction against her and yet she's the one that has given us the sense of that we're equal in the first place you know that that is the irony um behind all of it to me is sort of this rejection of um of true womanhood um because of the fact that it doesn't fit in with their desire for true womanhood to look like male maleness mm-hmm. <laughs> masculine the masculine so yeah, there's all kinds of inconsistencies there, but um, and I, I think that was one of the other things that it, you know was really motivating all of my research was you know I have a PhD in philosophy and so I was looking for sort of intellectual tre- threads and trends that um, would point to sort of real underpinnings, intellectual underpinnings behind a lot of these ideas, and I just didn't find them. I kept digging and digging, and you just find sort of um, a lot of emotionalism, a lot of ideologies, a lot of um, kind of bankrupt ideas, um, even a lot of sort of bullying. Um, and I, I think that that's one of the things that most of us are unaware of. You know, we think that if we dig deep enough, there's got to be some sort of traction, you know, some sort of logic to all this. And it, it it's really, it's just not there. Um, so I, I think that these are sort of deep roots that we're just now beginning to dig through. I think that will be a fascinating next book for you. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. because that that everything you're saying, at least anecdotally from my perspective as a Protestant convert, mm-hmm. it is very much true. It is mm-hmm. so that's that's why Protestant converts have such a hard time with Mary when they yeah. convert to Catholicism. That's I mean, mm-hmm. how many examples do we have to show of of Protestants who don't enter the church specifically because, because of, of her. Mary yeah. and that that's yeah. always the biggest stumbling block. Mm-hmm. And on the other side, it's so much of the beauty of Catholicism. And mm-hmm. once you actually know what she's about and mm-hmm. are not threatened by her anymore, it's right. It, it opens a whole new world for you. So, yeah, um, no, that's absolutely right. And I, you know, as a revert, I, I think it's only recently I've really kind of put my ear to the ground to listen to Protestant converts and, uh, and you know, just all the struggles that they had within their marriages, um, within their understanding of themselves as a woman, I, you know, those are things that I, uh, you know, haven't had to deal with kind of those distortions. And yet I, uh, the more I pay attention, the more I'm hearing um, just there was real struggles and this real, um, animosity that I, and, and wounds that I, I think are driving a lot of, of feminism because they're saying we're not getting the answers within Christianity, but they've got to be somewhere. So we must be finding them in, in feminism. And so it's this real struggle again, because they kind of only have half the truth. Um, and that's not, uh, that's not satisfying for anyone. So I, I think that's been interesting to just kind of look at it from that angle as well. 